I think Saints Row 4 is a terrible game. It's a game that has abandoned everything that was once great about the franchise to create something which is average at best. A sci-fi superhero game built on foundations that were never designed to support it. Gone are the innovations from Saints Row 1 that expanded the urban sandbox genre in interesting ways. Gone are the incredible pieces of side content and the groundbreaking open world from Saints Row 2. Gone are the over-the-top set pieces from Saints Row 3 that were technically impressive and fun to play. None of the qualities we saw in the previous games are present in Saints Row 4, and what we have to replace them is simply not good enough. The superpowers are generic and have been used in games that predate Saints Row 4, and the possibility of infinite simulations created by the sci-fi premise is never taken to its full potential. We return to Steelport far too frequently, or even worse, we replay levels we've already played. Ideas are reused and rehashed over and over to the point it's insulting to Saints Row fans everywhere, and every new idea that is slightly interesting is stretched to its absolute limit to pad out the game. Oh, and the narrative. The narrative is atrocious, but we'll get to that later. It's clear that something happened during the development of Saints Row 4 that forced Volition down this path, to cut corners and give us a game which pales in comparison to everything that came before it. There is a version of this game that could have worked as a spin-off or as a shorter piece of DLC, but in its current form, Saints Row 4 is a disaster. So the Saints wish to play again. Okay, let's start with the superpowers. As gamers, we know how abilities in video games work. We earn XP, level up our character, and we unlock a new ability. Our abilities range from summon spells in Skyrim to the Morph Ball in Metroid, but generally they make us better at combat, traversal, or stealth. The fact that abilities are common in video games creates a problem for developers, as it makes it difficult for them to create something we haven't seen before. I personally roll my eyes at abilities that give us minor stat boosts, and I bet you've seen fire, ice, or lightning abilities tens or even hundreds of times before. Even some of the more interesting abilities, like being able to teleport or rewind time, are present in many games. Enter Saints Row 4, the fourth game in a series about gangsters and guns, and we have brand new abilities in the form of superpowers. We have four active abilities that we use in combat, and four passive abilities that are mainly used for traversal. The first thing to say is that we've seen these powers before. They are not only extremely generic, but they've also been used across different games. Our blast superpower fires out a ball of elemental damage, which might as well be the starter spell in a fantasy RPG. Telekinesis is used to pick up objects in enemy vehicles, which is used in Destroy All Humans or any Star Wars game. Stomp is a glorified ground pound that wouldn't feel out of place in Hulk Ultimate Destruction. And Buff gives us elemental damage boosts that will be familiar to anyone who's played Infamous. Even the traversal abilities, which are arguably Saints Row 4's strongest feature, are ripped straight from other games. Super Jump is taken from 2007's Crackdown, and our Wall Run and Glide ability are almost a one-to-one -one copy of Prototype from 2009. In fact, so much of Saints Row 4 is similar to Prototype that I'm sure Volition just copied ideas over. We can cling to walls and scale buildings. We have a new medal system for the side activities. We unlock new powers by defeating mini-bosses known as Wardens. They're known as Hunters in Prototype, by the way. And we can also correct ourselves by pressing a button if an enemy hits us into the air. Oh, and the Super Jump is here too, in exactly the same form. We hold down a button to jump higher into the air, and we can chain jumps together by holding down the button mid-jump. Nothing is new here. And I know that game development is about taking inspiration from other games, by taking past work and expanding on it. But Volition just doesn't do that. They take the inspiration from other work, but they never iterate on the previous formula. And we have to ask ourselves, why would we play Saints Row 4 when there are better, more original versions of these mechanics already out there? The superpowers also affect other parts of what makes Saints Row great, and even GTA-style games for that matter. You know how GTA-style games include vehicles to let us drive across the map while we listen to the radio? Well now, this is no longer a core feature in Saints Row 4. Because we can sprint at super speeds and basically fly across the map, there is no reason to use vehicles in the game. 
Why would we waste time hijacking a random vehicle or calling in a car we've upgraded when every option is much slower than the standard movement system? And I know that vehicles are still here for anyone who wants to use them, but I doubt many people would. It's like saying in real life, you have a GPS built into your phone, but here's a paper map and a compass if you'd rather use that instead. Without cars, it means we no longer have intense chases with the cops or rival gangs. Those white knuckle moments where we dash to a forget-me-not or back to our safe house are gone. So if you wanted that classic Saints Row experience in 2013, you better play GTA 5. Car customization no longer has a place without the use of vehicles. And even one of the best mechanics in the series has been gutted in Saints Row 4, the ability to call in homies for backup. There is simply no reason to call in homies to help us when we have superpowers at our fingertips. What is a gang member with a pistol going to do against an army of alien invaders? I audibly laughed when I saw that an upgrade from Saints Row 3 had been carried over to Saints Row 4. Look at this! Why would we waste money upgrading our gang members to carry SMGs when we can create a nuclear explosion by smashing into the ground? If you've played Saints Row 4, you'll know that Volition has added superpowered homies into the game in an attempt to make this system viable again, but it doesn't work. The encounters never become tough enough where we need our superpowered homies help, and whenever I did call them in, it caused more of a headache than it was worth. Basically, they couldn't keep up with me as I super sprinted across the map as they were constantly getting left behind. They have been programmed to teleport to our location, like we're too far away from our co-op partner in Halo, but this was completely broken. I'd call in a super homie and run across the map, only to realise they disappeared and were no longer with me. For some reason, they despawned or left the area, or there's a bug. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, not a good system. Surely, it would have been better to have these ideas included as DLC for Saints Row 3, or as a spin-off title rather than a mainline game in the series. We've seen other games in the past do this to great success, without disrupting an entire franchise in the process. Like, can you imagine if the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption wasn't actually DLC? What if instead it was used to create Red Dead Redemption 2, and rather than have one of the best narratives in video game history, we stopped a zombie invasion and rode around on the four horses of the apocalypse? Or what about the Mothership Zeta DLC for Fallout 3? Imagine if that was the entire game in Fallout 4, where we went to an alien spaceship and fought our way back down to Earth. Well, that's pretty much what Saints Row 4 is. Saints Row 4 feels like a piece of DLC that has been crudely padded out to make a full game. I mean, the evidence is everywhere. So many assets from the previous games have been reused to pad out Saints Row 4, to the point where it's insulting. It's almost as if Volition are reusing content we've already paid for and trying to resell it back to us as something new. We have the same customization options for our character, the same objects are used to pad out environments, vehicles that have been reskinned and reused, and there are reused bosses, reused levels, and an entire map that's been reused. Yep, in Saints Row 4, we're back in Steelport exactly the same steel port from Saints Row 3 that was never good to begin with. It's the same bland map that doesn't have enough distinct areas to create a compelling space to explore, and it's the same map with an open world that is stilted and lifeless. Unlike Saints Row 2, where Volition were pushing the boundaries of open worlds in 2008, Steelport was a significant step back, so why Volition thought it was a good idea to reuse it again is baffling. And I know that reusing assets is a core part of game development, as it makes sure the team can focus their resources on the places that matter. They can spend time developing new gameplay elements, rather than wasting time creating tiny details that most people wouldn't even notice. Volition also reused the map from Saints Row 1 in Saints Row 2, so what's the issue here? The difference is that Volition hasn't expanded the map like they did in Saints Row 2. Saints Row 2 included new districts and added groundbreaking interior spaces that were huge in scale and full of detail. This meant exploring Stillwater for the second time in Saints Row 2 felt new. But in Saints Row 4, it's exactly the same map with the same layout and the same boring design. We walk down the same alleyways we've already walked down. We see the same adverts we've already seen. And we pass the same buildings we've already passed. You could argue that the new traversal system makes the map feel new, as we are interacting with Steelport in a completely different way. We spend less time exploring on the ground and more time in its vertical space. And if we did stop to appreciate Steelport, 
there are new alien structures on the map, and brand new effects. I did enjoy these changes, but they never made this space feel different enough compared to Saints Row 3. Volition could have done more here by adding in new areas and designing them to take advantage of this new traversal system, or by giving us new places to explore, just like they did with Saints Row 2. But Volition doesn't do any of this. Instead, they reuse assets everywhere, which makes the game feel cheap. Look at the main missions and you'll see what I mean. So this is a mission for Pierce, where we have to save him from a simulation. Our enemy in Saints Row 4 is an alien overlord called Zinyak, and he's basically torturing the Saints by making them relive their worst nightmares. For Pierce, this means a marketing campaign has gone wrong and he's been attacked by a giant Saints flow can called Paul. That sounds quite cool, doesn't it? We rescue Pierce and we have a Pacific Rim style showdown against Paul. But do you notice something about this location? Well, if you've played Saints Row 3, you'll know that this is the penthouse from the opening missions in the game. It's a location we spend a lot of time in, as it's one of our cribs and we also return here for a handful of missions. We've already been here many times before. Okay, so that's a bad example, as there are unique mechanics to make this mission feel new. A rocket launcher boss fight against Paul and a turret section in a helicopter. But what about this? This is another mission where we try to save Johnny Gat from his simulation. In Johnny's simulation, he relives the moment he died during the opening of Saints Row 3. You can already see where this is going, can't you? Volition has created this premise of people being trapped in their past, which means we have to revisit past areas to save them. So, to carefully avoid this happening, Volition includes new mechanics and environments to make Saints Row 4 feel fresh. Except, they don't do that. They reuse the airplane hangar sequence from Saints Row 3 that we've already played. What I find most insulting about this is the fact Volition also reuse levels from Saints Row 1 and 2. There's a mission where we have to defend the Saints Church, which is almost a one-to-one -one copy of a mission in Saints Row 1, and this last one I genuinely couldn't believe. There's a mission where we rescue Shawnee from Veteran Child, which not only reuses the same combat space from Saints Row 2, but it includes the same boss fight with the same mechanics. We have to stun Veteran Child in order to damage him in a sequence we've already played. Apart from the improved visuals and slight tweaks, it's the same mission. This approach to reusing content is everywhere in Saints Row 4. The opening of the game starts with us taking down Cirrus Temple, the main villain we already defeated at the end of Saints Row 3. But then we fight him again when we rescue Kinsey from her simulation, and then once again in a side quest with Kinsey. We fight Veteran Child again after we rescue Shawnee. Mero, one of the gang leaders from Saints Row 2 turns up, I counted three encounters against him, and we even fight Loren from Saints Row 3. Volition are literally reusing reused assets. Is this actually a joke? Does it look like I'm joking? Even when Volition develops new features and doesn't reuse assets, they overuse them to pad out the game. Take the new clusters, for example, which are essentially a collectible on the map. The clusters are leftover data fragments we find in the open world that we collect and use to upgrade our superpowers. At their best, clusters create a zen-like experience as we bounce around steel ports and glide through the air, but at their worst, they're an absolute chore to collect. Because rather than Volition placing a sensible amount of clusters in the game, they have placed an absurd amount on the map in an attempt to extend Saints Row 4's playtime. Seriously, how many clusters do you think there are in Saints Row 4? 100? 200? 500? Higher. How many of these things are there? I cannot believe this, but there are over 1,200 clusters to collect in Saints Row 4. It's absolute madness because we'll look out across the map and see areas flooded with bright blue clusters just waiting to be collected. Some clusters are tripled up, so there's not technically over 1,200 points to collect, but there must be close to 1,000. Volition tries to make this more manageable by making sure we don't need to collect all of the clusters to upgrade our superpowers, but it's not far off. Because in order to unlock all of the upgrades for our superpowers, we need a whopping 1,065 clusters which will take hours of your life to collect. Trust me, I've done it. It felt like I spent half of my playtime in Saints Row 4 collecting cluster, after cluster, after cluster. And I know I don't have to say this, but this system is a rip-off of the orbs from Crackdown. In Crackdown, we platform across the map and collect different orbs to increase our core abilities. But ironically, this version in Saints Row 4 is worse. 
In Crackdown, the orbs give us more experience based on how hard they are to reach. Orbs on the ground give us the least experience, whereas orbs on top of skyscrapers give us the most. It's a system designed to make the challenging orbs more rewarding, but in Saints Row 4, every cluster is worth the same value. And again, Volition has copied other people's ideas, but not built on them in interesting ways. The new activities are unfortunately no better, as they've also been stretched to their absolute limit to pad out the game. Most of the new activities are designed using our superpowers to create mini-games we play in between missions. This is a great idea, as any developer knows you should reuse mechanics to create new gameplay. A lot of games do this to create puzzles using abilities that were originally designed for combat. But unlike the best developers, Volition ultimately fails. Because we spend most of the game using our superpowers, being forced to use them again in the activities turns them into another chore. Telekinesis is used across different activities to throw objects through hoops or coloured balls at targets. Platforming is used in platforming rifts and to scale Ubisoft-style towers in the open world. Super Sprint is used during time trial races and speed rifts. And do we really need five different types of mayhem? Regular mayhem, UFO mayhem, tank mayhem, telekinesis mayhem, stomp mayhem, and mech suit mayhem. About halfway through the game, these new activities fall flat as the new superpowers start to lose their steam, as we don't see them used in interesting ways. Where are the pieces of side content like crowd control, the strongholds, or super ethical reality climax? Those well thought out pieces of content that were standouts in the series. None of these design philosophies are in Saints Row 4. Instead, Volition has spread themselves too thin in an attempt to pad in as much content as possible, to grossly pad out the game even if the content isn't worth including. These new activities are like free-to-play mobile games that are designed to waste our time when we have nothing else to do. It's also clear that Volition are running out of ideas towards the end of the game, with the same telekinesis mechanic used across the main missions. I was absolutely gutted during the final boss fight against Zinyak, where the main mechanic we used to beat him was telekinesis. This is the final boss fight in the game, the moment we've been working towards for the past 15 hours or so. It should be a standout moment with unique mechanics, something interesting that makes the game end on a high. You know, just like any developer creating boss fights should do. But unfortunately, Volition didn't develop unique mechanics to make this finale stand out. They simply reused telekinesis, a mechanic that got old about 5 hours ago. It's a shame. One of the worst changes in Saints Row 4 is how we interact with the new activities compared to the previous games. Previously, we could choose which activities to complete in the open world. So, if we didn't enjoy an activity, we could completely ignore it and we wouldn't miss out on anything. There were incentives in Saints Row 1 and 2 to beat the activities, as we unlocked something cool after beating the final level, but these unlocks were never core mechanics. This has changed in Saints Row 4, because now we have to complete activities during the game's new side quests. We go to the game's main hub, pick up a quest from one of our homies, and then we complete it in the open world. Now, that sounds pretty standard, as most side quests work in this way, but the side quests in Saints Row 4 are not like other side quests. In fact, calling these side quests is an insult to games everywhere, because rather than having a self-contained story where we learn more about the world or one of our supporting characters, these side quests force us to complete open world activities. I'm not kidding when I say that most of the side quests have objectives like this. Hack into the store, or clear enemies from a location, or complete the platforming rift. That's it. These are some of the worst side quests I've seen in a game in recent memory, and they wouldn't even pass as a daily in an MMO. The thing is though, if we choose to avoid the side quests, we would lose out on major features in the game, as we wouldn't unlock our superpower variants. Sure, each superpower is unlocked during the main quest by defeating wardens, but then there are two more variants for each power that can only be unlocked in the side quests. So this means we have to engage with the following loop. We run back to our hub, pick up a quest, run back into the open world to complete it, then run back to the hub to complete the quest. Pick up another quest, rinse and repeat. What I struggle to understand is the way Volition has designed these quests in the wider space of Saints Row 4. They haven't locked the activities behind the quests because we can still complete them in the open world. 
This got me thinking, because if we can complete the activities in a classic way, then why are these side quests here? I decided to test this by beating every activity on the map in the open world and ignoring the side quest completely. If every activity was complete, then surely that means the side quests are complete too. Surely the side quest couldn't ask me to beat an activity that I'd just beaten. In the end, it turns out that you don't need to complete the side quest at all. If you clear the entire map on your own, then the side quest will also complete every time you pick one up. You can literally stand next to a homie, skip all of their dialogue and each quest completes on the spot, which means there is no need to waste time going back and forth from the hub. I would say if you are thinking about playing Saints Row 4, play the game this way, rather than the way Volition wants you to. You will save so much time, trust me. Now, if I am being fair here, maybe Volition designed this system to push us towards the activities and to show us the reward that's waiting for us if we beat them. I don't believe this though. Based on all of the padding, reused assets and reused missions from the previous games, I think this system is cynically here to pad out the game even more, to increase our playtime, forcing us to go back and forth for no reason whatsoever, to waste our time doing these uninspired side quests. To be clear, there are proper side quests in Saints Row 4. We have new loyalty missions where we go on a quest with a companion to unlock their super homie in the open world. But again, these are not good either, as Volition's approach to mission design ruins these moments too. For a loyalty quest with Matt Miller, for example, we fight the zombie enemies from Saints Row 3 in a casino we've already fought in from Saints Row 3. For Pierce's loyalty mission, we hunt down some toxic waste and fight Mero, in a much worse version of a mission from Saints Row 2, and the absolute worst offence here is the loyalty quest with Johnny. This was a real opportunity to add depth to Johnny's character and learn more about him, but none of this happens. Instead, Volition makes us play Professor Genki's super ethical reality climax from Saints Row 3, something we've spent the last game and optional DLC playing already. To show I'm not cherry-picking examples here, there is one good loyalty quest with Asher, an MI6 agent who's new in Saints Row 4. Here we escort a VIP through Steelport, and there's new mechanics along the way. We have to decide to take down or leave a potential suspect, then we defend the VIP with a sniper before there's a classic Saints Row shootout at the end. This mission, and a couple of others in the game, reminded me that Volition are capable of creating great moments when they want to, but for some reason they choose to cut corners and pad out the game in almost every area. To me, this screams of a troubled development, where Volition weren't given enough time to make a full game. I mean, some of the cutscenes look so amateurish. They're rendered in real time with clunky animation, bad lip syncing and poor sound design, like we're watching a shitty B-movie with our mates. Keith, listen to me! Look at this too. This is the cutscene that triggers when we pick up a side quest. It's a static camera locked onto a character who has little to no animation. Oh, and Keith David is channeling a hunchback here, like Ryder on his BMX in the GTA Definitive Editions. Of course, not every cutscene is like this. There are some high production, pre rendered cutscenes throughout, but the fact we have this low bar of quality in a mainline Saints Row game is not good. Something must have happened during development, as this feels rushed. That brings me on to the development of Saints Row 4, as it's probably a good time to discuss it. The development was in fact troubled, which explains a lot of the issues we've already discussed. Saints Row 4 started as DLC for Saints Row 3. As soon as Saints Row 3 was wrapped up, Volition started developing a new piece of downloadable content, known as the Enter the Dominatrix DLC. The DLC included a lot of the features we see in Saints Row 4. The four superpowers we have were included, and we were trapped in a virtual simulation of Steelports. Alongside this, the actual Saints Row 4 was in the pre-production stage, and to avoid confusion, I'll be calling the Saints Row 4 we never saw, Saints Row 4 Prime, which is the internal name for the game at Volition. Saints Row 4 Prime was completely different to Saints Row 4. New features were planned, like a cover system and parkour, and the plot was miles away from the Saints Row 4 we know today. Volition were planning to reintroduce Johnny Gat into the series. They were going to use the cloning plot points we saw in Saints Row 3 to bring back an evil clone of Johnny. Evil Johnny would then discover time travel and head back through time to recruit famous historical figures to act as generals in his new gang. The generals would overtake a brand new map, with each of their areas themed like the time period they were from. To me, this would be like the classic Saints Row, 
because it reminds me of Stillwater, which also had different districts, each with a different theme. Sure, this idea was in its infancy, but I would have preferred this over the disappointment of the Saints Row 4 that shipped. At least we would have got a new map. Anyway, Saints Row 4 Prime was scrapped when the publishers at the time, THQ, thought the superpowers in the Enter the Dominatrix DLC would work as a full release. We also have to remember, this was in 2012, and the PS4 and Xbox One were being released in the following year. Saints Row 4 was being developed for the current generation at the time, and THQ were conscious that everyone would move on to the next generation shortly after their game was released. If nobody was playing the 360 or PS3 anymore, then as a result, no one would play Saints Row 4. After this decision was made, there was more trouble at the studio when THQ went bankrupt. Volition were left without a publisher until Deep Silver acquired them at the start of 2013. The timeline is a little muddy, as information from inside development studios is difficult to track down, but it sounds like time was against Volition. Yeah. So then they decided, they said, okay, take what you've done with Enter the Dominatrix, Saints Row 3.5, turn it into a full-fledged Saints Row 4. And we were just kind of like, what? And this was literally... <laughs> a month before we were going to submit the game, Goldmaster. Right. Zach Lowry, the animation director on Saints Row 4, says something similar in his 2014 GDC talk, when he highlights time was tight and there was some serious crunch at the studio. So, animation direction overview. What was the animation direction overview? Due to an extreme time crunch between Saints Row 3 and 4 and THQ's need to kind of push out another product, it didn't change from Saints Row 3 to 4. All of this makes complete sense in hindsight. The mountain of reused assets, missions and map aren't in Saints Row 4 because Volition were being shady, it's because time was against them to finish the game before the Xbox and PS4 released. That's why the game also has more bugs than I ever encountered in Saints Row 1, 2 and 3 combined. I got stuck below the map and I saw bosses get stuck in the environment a couple of times. It's why the narrative is atrocious, with plot points that don't make sense. It's because Volition took their ideas from the Enter the Dominatrix DLC and moulded the Saints Row franchise to fit in with these ideas. Take the entire setup of the game. It starts with the Saints being involved in an anti-terrorist plot to take down Cirrus Temple, who we already know is a reused character from the first game. We infiltrate a terrorist bunker, take down Cirrus, and then jump onto a nuclear missile to manually disarm it before it hits America. Our heroics on this day help in our bid to become president five years later, when we enter the White House and use our old crew as political advisors. Let's pause there because I actually like this idea. The fact that we're president is an opportunity to create some great moments. We could have used our power to make tough decisions in the game, like how in Dragon Age Inquisition, we take the throne to decide the fate of our prisoners in Skyhold. However, this presidential plot is never developed in any way. It is simply here as a plot device to set up the game that has no effect on the gameplay. It's here so that when Zinyak attacks, he comes for us, as we're now the leader of the free world. After a nod to Space Invaders and a very outdated QTE, we ultimately get captured by Zinyak, who puts us into a simulation of Steelport, and the game begins. Are you still with me? Because this is getting pretty convoluted already, isn't it? Let's just say, if you've ever seen The Matrix, it's like The Matrix. Actually, it's not just like The Matrix, it is The Matrix, with spaceship sequences through tight sci-fi corridors, people waking up in the real world in a gooey pod, and a moment that oddly channels one of the worst moments from The Matrix Reloaded. Again, and I know I've said this a lot, but we've seen all of this before. Objectively speaking, I am okay with this setup, as it does make sense. But the problem is, as the narrative goes on, it completely falls apart, as Volition includes outrageous plot points just to make the game function in the way they want. For example, once we break out of the simulation early on, we see Zinyak blow up planet Earth, murdering 7 billion people, and no one even bats an eyelid. Rather than this being a dramatic highlight in the narrative, and used as a narrative point of no return, like most things, it's here simply to make the game work. Because we break out of the simulation, see Earth get blown up, and then immediately decide to go back into the simulation we've just broken out of. Why would we do this? I mean, there is a reason for this, but it's very weak. I'll just let Kinsey explain what it actually is. The president is right. Whenever the simulation 
simulation is disrupted, I have a small window to work my way inside the Zen security network. The more it's disrupted, the more time I'll have to map out Zinyak's mothership. I can identify structural weakness, locate where they're keeping our friends... And find Zinyak. Yeah. Hello? This is only here, so Volition can include the real-world sci-fi Matrix stuff. They want to include missions in the real world, where we fight through alien ships with a mech suit. But if we never broke out of the simulation, none of this could happen. So they've quickly written a plot point, which doesn't make sense. We see this everywhere too. Characters double cross us to allow Zinyak to ambush us, except the character then changes their mind about half an hour later. We use a key to crash the simulation, which makes me question why we wasted all that time trying to disrupt it in the first place. And by far the worst moment comes when Volition decides to bring back Johnny Gat and show a complete lack of respect for continuity in the series. It turns out Johnny Gat didn't actually die in Saints Row 3. Instead, he was abducted by Zinyak, who put him in a simulation for the past five years. Apparently, Zinyak abducted him first because he was impressed with Johnny's skills in combat and had to take him off the battlefield before his invasion. Come on guys, I'm not buying it. These plot points, like most of the game, are an insult to fans of Saints Row everywhere. Though video games aren't exactly renowned for their storytelling, I genuinely couldn't believe the moment that Volition included Keith David in the game. Just like Burt Reynolds in Saints Row 3, the actor Keith David is in the game playing himself. But in this case, it's much, much worse. Because Keith David played Julius in Saints Row 1 and 2. This is like Volition giving all of the classic Saints Row fans a middle finger, like they don't care about past events, past characters, or the legacy of the franchise. They do try to be self-aware and comment on how Keith sounds oddly similar to Julius, but I'm not buying it. Simply showing you know that something you've created is wrong does not make it right. Just don't do it in the first place. I guess you could say that trying to critique the narrative of Saints Row 4 is like a restaurant critic writing a review of a McDonald's drive through This is a stupid game, so it's okay to have a stupid narrative that doesn't make sense. But the thing is, Volition tried to make everything else make sense in the game. Mayhem, for example, is here to disrupt the simulation. We complete insurance fraud to see how much damage we can take inside the simulation. And we upload viruses in survival, take down rogue programs in assassination. And for Chop Shop, we steal cars to hijack data. So Volition clearly wants this to make sense. And unfortunately, the narrative doesn't hold up when we think about it in any depth. Okay, I don't want to talk about this game anymore. It's clear I don't like it, but I want to finish this review by saying who might enjoy Saints Row 4. I think if you had a weekend free and picked up Saints Row 4 for a bargain price, you could have a good time. Jumping around the map and collecting clusters is enjoyable, and you will have some fun with the superpowers. They're mechanically solid and fun to use, even if that fun is short-lived. We also have good enemy variety, and there's a handful of good missions along the way. If you liked the more over-the-top Saints Row 3, I think you would also enjoy parts of Saints Row 4. But for anyone who's enjoyed this series since its origins in 2006, I struggle to see how you can forgive Saints Row 4. Not only have you played most of the game before, but its mechanics are better used in better games. Play Infamous. Play Prototype. Play Crackdown. Play any game you can think of that's better than this. Just don't play Saints Row 4. It's sad to see a once great franchise stoop so low because this isn't the Saints Row that I know so well. This isn't even Saints Row 4. Quite frankly, this is Saints Row Poor.